Hey what's up everyone, this is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial and this time I just wanted to show you this little simple Houdini like magic trick that we can do with the cloth engine in Cinema 4D 2023 and honestly I just wanted to have some fun with you and uh, wanted to talk about this technique. It's not complicated so don't be afraid of this tutorial, I will keep it simple and short so I think we should just have some fun in Cinema 4D right? Alright let me just quickly tell you about the new course on my page which will start probably next week and in it I will show you how you can make these beautiful patterns also with the cloth engine for example for a Nike logo for Adidas Converse whatever you want you can create these awesome graphics and I think they look quite impressive and beautiful all right so if you want to learn this one my patreon would be the right place for you or if you want to create some cool marble runs there should be a promo code where you get this marble run kit with a lot of different modules or if you want to create stuff like this one yeah check out my page Patreon. There are also 100 MoGraph elements if you want to do some fun stuff like these and a lot of tutorials. All right. And by the way, my Patreon works like Netflix or whatever your monthly subscription is. So you can sign in at every time and just get the full month of my training. Be also sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring the bell. Follow me on Instagram. Download some free stuff on Gumroad. But other than that, let's just dive into Cinema 4D and have some fun. All right, finally in Cinema 4D and I just wanted to show you my final scene. All right, let's just scrub through the timeline here. It's a little bit slow because the cache is already 20 gigabytes big for this cloth simulation, but you can see I can go through the scene and see all of the beautiful details. And this was my final resolution for the final animation, all right? But I think we want to start from scratch here, all right? So let's just go into a new scene and you can see I just prepared a camera here. Let's just make it visible, all right? the camera and the cube and then I put the cube into an atom array you will find the atom array over here all right just put it into it and then I thought it would be quite cool when we put a collider tag onto the cube so just go to simulation put the collider tag onto the cube and when I'm already here I will just pin this one into my layout all right so there's a collider on the cube because I want to have these sausages but you can also call it a capsule but I just like to call this one sausage this one donuts so I'm really into food. I just really get hungry at work sometimes and uh, this is a pizza, this is a piece of a pizza and um, yeah all kinds of food here. But anyway let's continue here. I'm losing time already. Let's simulate something like the sausage element here. I just want to see it through my camera. All right so this one can be bigger in the height. All right let's do it like this. Give it more segments for example something like this seems to be enough to test it in the scene. For now I want to make the camera invisible and I just want to make the sausage a little bit smaller. Do it like this and now I want to put it into a null object by pressing Alt T. I will duplicate the null, put it next to it and there I want to make the capsule just a bit smaller. Do it like this. Now I have to compensate for it by reducing the height segments. I will duplicate the capsule, put it down here, make this one even smaller, something like this and also compensate for it with less height segments. All right, this is looking good. I will duplicate the null one more time and let's kill this one and let's make something like this. Let's reduce the height segments one more time just like this and duplicate the capsule one last time. Put it down here, make it bigger. All right, it's too big. Let's do it like that. All right, and there you will have three packages of sausages. Now put these ones into a cloner. Let's put it into it and let's press F2 to see it from above. Let's say maybe 60 by 60. All right, this is Hmm, that's a bit dense. So you could, for example, search for capsules here, select all of them and let's reduce the radius to 25 or 27. All right, this is looking good. Let's delete this one. And now we will have this package of sausages here. All right, this is looking awesome, but it is just sorted from left to right. So I think this is boring. That's why I put this one on random mode. And now you can see this looks way more interesting. You could in addition put also a random effector in the scene. Let's delete these values and just give it a slight offset in the y axis. Let's just see this one. All right, I think this will just look a little bit more interesting. Now compensate for it by moving it up just a little bit and there you go. So now we want to turn this one into cloth. 
and we want to do this one with a vertex map, all right? So therefore, I would just right click on it, search for a vertex map, put it onto the cloner. But I think the vertex map on the cloner will not work. Otherwise, this would turn red, all right? And I think therefore, you could just put the cloner into a connect. Let's do it like this, put the tag on the connect. And now you can see we get this red value, which is basically telling it every vertex has a value of zero. And when it turns to yellow, it will have a value of 100. All right, so we can start like this. We want to freeze the state and grow from there. All right, and with these two settings, you can grow it in different speed and variations. So let's do it like this. And let's also put a spherical field into the mix. Now we'll just go down here and the spherical field can start like this. I will just set a couple of keyframes, go up to 10. And now I just want to touch all of these capsules. Let's do it like this. And now hopefully this will grow over your elements and it will turn from a value of zero to 100. And basically we want to say, hey, turn from a static object into a cloth object. But the transition is pretty linear and boring. So let's just go inside of here. And let's put in, for example, a random field and let's put the random field in the radius. Let's just see how this will look. That's a bit underwhelming. So I will make this one bigger, put it to 600 or put it to 500. Let's see it one more time. All right, still pretty ugly. So I think I want to animate it also. Let's just see. All right, so I'm a bit underwhelmed. So I think this is because in the settings for the freeze, we could increase the radius to 15, all right, or maybe even 16 and reduce the effect strength. Let's just see if this one will get a bit more beautiful. All right, I think it's okay. You can tweak the settings, but for now this is okay. I just think the scale of the noise is too big. Let's see it one more time. All right, and I think this is reasonably okay. So you can definitely do it even better, but for now this is pretty fine. All right, so I would say this is good enough for now. Of course, you can make it more smooth and stuff, but I just want to go a little bit fast here, all right? So now we want to use this one to turn our object into cloth and you can go over here, but I just recognized that I pinned it already into my layout. So I will just select a t-shirt, the cloth tag, put it on my element. And now I will press Control D to just be sure that I deactivate my gravity. All right, this is looking good. And we could also activate a turbulence. You will find it over here in simulation turbulence. All right, and let's just see how this will look. All right, and this is not what I want because we want to turn it into cloth, right? So we need to go to mix animation, activate this one. And basically this is saying, hey, you are no longer cloth. And with zero, you are cloth. All right, it's simple like that. But you can also put the vertex map into it, which will animate from zero cloth to 100 cloth. All right, and basically you will get this effect. And you can see it will grow over our element. It's a little bit slow in the effect. All right, we could make it faster but it's kind of cool. So let's also give it some ballooning. All right, let's inflate it. Let's see it one more time. All right, and now, now it gets really dense in this cage, right? So maybe we could just inflate it to an overpressure of, of 1.2. Let's double check it. All right, it's still pretty dense in this cage. So it's up to you. If you don't want to have it in the cage, you can get rid of this one. Let's just see it now. And now you can see they can get out of it. Looks also pretty cool, but I think this will be really funny when they are trapped inside of it. And I think this will also just be a cool effect. <laughs> All right. So what you can also do is put some friction into the scene and basically the friction, I will just delete the track here. You could just go to frame like 100 and animate some strength of the friction in the mix. Therefore, I would just temporarily deactivate my cloth simulation, go to the friction and go to, for example, 100, set the strength to zero and go to 130 and put the strength to 200 or something like that. And by that you will increase the friction in the scene and this will just slow the animation down, remove energy from the scene and it will just be like a slow motion effect where it comes to a halt. So let's enable the cloth simulation again and we can already put some rotation in the scene. All right, so you can see the rotation. Where is it? And you can also find it in the forces rotation, put it in the scene and just be sure this will always rotate around the Z axis. So just put it into it like this. And 
and now hopefully i think the rotation can be even stronger but you can see they rotate they are trapped in this box and now it comes to a halt with the friction all right so basically these are all the ingredients that i used for my simulation i think i didn't trap it in this cage so you could get rid of this one all right now you can see they can move outside of it which is also cool and of course if you want to give it an even better effect then you can put more capsules in the scene give it more resolution maybe you could even play with some other parameters so we can also for example go here to the target length of our cloth and let's say wherever the vertex map is touching it and turning it from zero to a value of 100 the cloth in itself will get longer all right and now you will see that this will also stretch and will give it more cloth and it will get even more dense in this cage and yeah this is just such a beautiful effect all right and yeah so basically you just have to put more resolution into it so i think you learned something cool about the friction to give it something like a slow motion effect the rotation is cool the turbulence and of course this vertex map technique is so helpful in combination with the cloth so once again as a reminder just put enough resolution in the scene cush it maybe go for a little snack drink coffee wait for 10 to 15 minutes and then you will have something amazing like this one just as a final reminder here is my animation all right and just to be honest you can do this color transformation in the material but of course you can also just do it in after effects put a color correction layer over it with a smooth blend here and just change the color here with the hue saturation put the slider more into the red tone and then you will just get a color transformation all right so sometimes you can do this easy stuff in the material but sometimes you can also just do this in comp all right so i hope this was useful for you it would be awesome to see you on my patreon maybe you download some free stuff on my gumroad subscribe to my youtube channel ring the bell do the good stuff have an awesome colorful day bye everyone